Hello everyone, I'm Golden Sound, you're watching The Headphone Show by Headphones.com, and this is the Orchard Audio Valencia. It's a very unusual headphone amp, most notably because this is a power amplifier, meaning it has no volume control, it's simply a fixed gain amplifier, and you adjust the volume itself with either a dedicated external preamp or the volume control on your DAC. It's a collaboration between Zeos and Orchard Audio, who are most well known for their Class D amplifiers, but this is Class AB. And this is a pretty powerful amp as well, up to 17 watts at 32 ohms, but is it any good? Well, let's dive in. The exterior of the Valencia is a matte finish, with the Orchard Audio logo engraved in the top, and with Orchard's signature angled front plate. It feels fairly solid, nothing too crazy, nothing excessive, but very nicely done overall. On the rear we find the IEC inlet, the power supply is internal, a pair of XLR inputs, no RCA as this is a balanced only amp, though you could in theory adapt an unbalanced DAC output to the balanced input of this amp without issue, and a pair of speaker outputs. As well as being able to drive headphones, this can also power speakers with up to 8 watts into 8 ohms. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to evaluate this particular bit just because I don't really have any speakers that are sensitive enough to test with just 8 watts, but for those people that are looking to run a pair of passive bookshelves or monitors, especially if this is going to sit on their desk to drive headphones, it's a nice feature to have. Though it is worth noting that you can't swap between the speaker and headphone outputs, they do run simultaneously, so if you are powering speakers and you want to run headphones without the speakers playing, you do have to physically disconnect them. Still, very nice feature to have. On the front is the main power switch, some more engravings, and the XLR headphone output. Again, this is a balanced only headphone output, so you can't run single-ended headphones on it. It's not safe to adapt a balanced output of an amplifier to a single-ended headphone, unfortunately. But personally, I don't really think this is so much of an issue. A, because nowadays, even very affordable headphones typically come with balanced cables much of the time. And if you're buying a $2,000 amp, you can either likely budget $30 to get a decent balanced cable, or you're probably running headphones that came with a balanced cable anyway. So would have been nice if there was a single-ended output, but I think most people are going to be running balanced anyway. What we do not see anywhere on the unit though is volume control, because this is a power amplifier, something that you usually only see in the speaker world. So that means that you're going to need to consider how you're going to do volume control outside of this unit, be it digital volume control on a DAC or a standalone analog preamplifier. For me personally, in my evaluation of this product, I use the Holoserene KTE preamp for some of it, but mostly I use the Ferrum 1 Legia C. Obviously I'm involved with that product, so I just want to disclose that, but it's not what's being reviewed here today, and I mostly used it A, because it's the main DAC that I use in my headphone system, and secondly because it has a very nice analog preamplifier in it if, like me, you prefer using analog volume control instead of digital. But let's have a look inside, and um, this is where things get a little bit uncertain. There isn't really any other way to say this, it looks kind of empty. This is a $2,000 amp, though currently $1,500, and there's not a ton inside. On the right is the switching power supply for the amplifier, and this red board is the amplifier itself. Just next to the XLR inputs we can see input buffers, and then an array of heat sinks offering dissipation for the 24 OPA1622 op amps hidden on the underside. This is a fairly simple design overall, but part of that's because for a power amplifier there's a lot that you just don't need. You don't need gain switching, you don't need volume control circuitry, you just need the amp itself. But nonetheless, this is still quite a hefty price for what's inside the box. Some of this is a little more than it will look on first glance. These 24 op amps alone are close to $200 in parts cost, there's more in the rest of the build, there will be PCB assembly costs, the chassis won't be super cheap to have made, but I think it's clear that a lot of the purchase price for this is going to the various parties involved. Obviously there's manufacturer margin, Orchard Audio isn't a charity, it's a collab with Zeo, so Zeos will be getting a cut too, and then there'll be dealer margin on top of that, but assuming this was $500 or so dollars to make, you could give each of those three parties 50% compounding margin and get to about $1700, so one way or another this seems to be quite a high margin product regardless of where that's divvied up or where it's going to. And so because of that, it better perform well for the price. So let's talk performance. If you want to skip just to my subjective impressions of the Valencia, skip to this timestamp because we are going to need to talk technical a little bit in this video, but let's take a look at objective performance. 
For power, it does indeed meet the claimed spec, getting about 17 watts into 32 ohms, and it can output just over 20 volts, so about 1.7 watts into 300 ohms. Also, it doesn't have too much rising distortion towards the very upper limits of its output levels, which firstly means that you're not likely to see any kind of change in sound depending on how hard your headphones are to drive. It's going to perform very consistently, but the slight amount of rising distortion implies that it's not using excessive levels of feedback, which personally, I'm a fan of. Overall, very powerful and very well behaved. Outputting a standard 4 volts into a 300 ohm load, we get total harmonic distortion and noise of minus 117 dB, which is excellent. Swapping to a more difficult 32 ohm load, it drops a little bit to about 115 dB, which is still great, especially given this all harmonics are still below minus 120 dB. This is also quite a low noise amplifier, so despite the massive power, it's still pretty great for IEMs as well, getting just under 80 dB signal to noise ratio when outputting an IEM level 50 millivolts output. That's about 3 dB behind the Chord Mojo 2 for reference. And with the 0.08 ohm output impedance, you can be confident that no matter what IEMs or headphones you're running, you're not going to get any change in sound or frequency response on the headphones due to the output impedance. Given as it's using a switch mode power supply, I did want to check the idle noise and see if there was any switching activity visible, and there is a little bit from about 30 kilohertz to a little over 500 kilohertz, which also changes a bit when the amplifier is active. Would have been nice if there was a little bit more filtering to get rid of this, but still it's very low in level and likely of no concern. If you would like to see full measurements of the Orchard Audio Valencia, they are on headphones.com, linked in the description. The Valencia is a very clean, very powerful amplifier. The idea with having a power amp is that not having any volume control circuitry in the signal path means there's less stuff to add distortion and noise, providing an overall cleaner amp. And all else being equal, this is true, but a similarly priced Ferrum Ore gets about the same in total harmonic distortion and noise, and for a little bit more, the Hollow Bliss gets slightly better performance, and both of those do have volume control. Additionally, you can't go without a volume control, you've got to do it somewhere. And if you use digital volume control on a DAC, you'll be losing dynamic range out of the DAC as you lower the volume. And if you use a dedicated preamp, you've just shifted the volume control circuitry to being external. So it's not that a power amp is inherently going to be cleaner, but the performance you get with something like this is going to depend quite heavily on how you do the volume control. Now, I do actually quite like this approach. If you have a high quality preamp, then it's quite likely that you'll be able to get a better result with a power amplifier and that than whatever volume control circuitry would otherwise be built into an amp. In fact, with the Ferrum Ore, for example, I preferred using it in bypass mode, which takes all of the volume control circuitry out of the signal path and using the Ferrum Wandler's analog preamplifier rather than using the Ore's own built-in volume control. I thought that the former option sounded better. And in my main speaker system, I use the Hollow Serene KTE as a dedicated preamp, as that's almost certainly going to be better than the volume control found in almost any integrated amplifier. It's just that this power amplifier approach means you need to consider what you're going to be using with it and possibly budget some additional funds for a decent preamp. Though luckily for headphone users at a desk setup where you can keep cables short, a passive preamplifier, there are really high quality options available for not crazy money. Goldpoint and Cosmo both make good ones, but there are cheaper ones available too. Those are a really good option for preamplifiers, as long as you can keep the cable short, you have to do that with passive preamplifiers. But it's nonetheless something which you need to consider and is probably going to be an additional cost for many people versus just buying an amp that has volume control already. But if the only option that you have is a DAC with digital volume control, especially if your DAC doesn't have crazy high dynamic range to begin with, it's possible that a power amplifier like this is not the right option for you. There's no point having a super high Synad amplifier if by the time that you've attenuated the signal from your DAC enough to get it to what you need, it's got nowhere near as much as the amp is capable of anyway. Anyway, let's talk subjective sound. I've used this amplifier with a variety of different headphones, the ZMF Atrium, Hyferman Sesvara OG and Unveiled, the Modhouse Tungsten, Abyss 1266, and with all of them, it seemed to work great. It drove the Hyferman Sesvara OG beautifully, and even with sensitive IEMs, it seemed to work quite nicely. I would say that if you are predominantly an IEM user, there are better amps to get where you want to prioritize ultra low noise floor over any kind of power, but if you use a variety of headphones, this does seem to not just drive, but also kind of synergize pretty well with just about everything that I threw at it. 
The only headphone where I could really run into a limit was the Modhouse Tungsten, because this headphone you're mostly limited by the output voltage capability of your amplifier, not power. And even though the Valencia does up to 17 watts at 32 ohms, it still has the same just over 20 volt output limit as many other amps, including a Ferrum Ore, Hollow Bliss, a Topping A90. Because of how the power rails are set up, most amps are actually the same in terms of output voltage capability. If you're looking for an amp for tungsten specifically, you want something that can output more voltage at high impedances. The Lave HP2A, for example, can do up to 60 volts, and that remains my favorite amp specifically for tungsten, even though for other headphones like a Sesvara, it's a little further down my ranking list. In overall signature, I would describe this as a very neutral, pretty transparent sounding amp with just a little bit of extra treble energy to it. This does not have the same glariness to it that I find a lot of other op-amp, particularly nested feedback, or crazy high feedback op-amp based designs have. But as we saw from some of the power measurements earlier, it doesn't look like this is using crazy high levels of feedback. And to my ear, it sounds significantly better than most cheaper options. This amplifier is highly detailed and technical. With headphones like the Sennheiser HD-800S or Hyperman's VAR unveiled, at no point did it ever feel like the amp was the limiting factor. It just let the headphones deliver what they were capable of without this being any kind of bottleneck. The Valencia stages pretty well too. It's not got any party trick level stuff going on, and there are other amplifiers which do a little bit better in terms of spaciousness, particularly in terms of frontal depth, but it's definitely more expansive sounding than most, both at cheaper levels, it's far more stagey than a Topping A90 for instance, and even at higher prices, it also stages better than the Cord Alto. I'd say it's about the same in this particular regard as the Ferrum Ore, maybe a little bit more incisive sounding too but with the trade-off that the bass on the ore is just a little bit tighter and harder hitting. This amplifier definitely delivers a slammy effect. The leading edge of kicks in tracks like First Time by Duran are immediate, forceful, punchy, and even when directly ABing it to amplifiers like the Chord Alto, which is pretty good in this regard, the Valencia takes the cake. It just feels a little bit tighter, better controlled, just harder hitting. And then comparing it to cheaper options like Hyperman's EF400, it's not really any kind of competition. The EF400 is bassier and warmer overall, but also more pillowy sounding. It's again just much more of a soft presentation, whereas the Valencia was tighter, better controlled, just more impactful. The Valencia is just quite simply far more technical than the EF400, whether you're talking about bass or treble content actually. One issue that quite a lot of amplifiers with a slightly more incisive or even bright in some cases sound can have is that timbre isn't really done well. Vocals can end up sounding a little bit strident and dry, and even amplifiers like the Nimbus US5 Pro. Very impressive amplifier in terms of how technical and detailed it is, how well it separates stuff, but vocals just never quite sounded right to me on that amplifier. They were just a little bit too dry. The Valencia doesn't have that problem. Timbre of vocals and other instruments is, generally speaking, great. They're not the warmest, they're not super full, and it's not adding anything to it. If that's what you want, then go for a slightly more colored amp like a Chord Alto. But if you want a more transparent sound, that is what this is delivering, and it's delivering it pretty damn well. In my subjective evaluation of the Valencia, there are only really three things that I can kind of critique. Firstly, it is very, very slightly on the brighter side, which never really bothered me for most stuff, but tracks that were already a little bit aggressive can be slightly too much. It's relatively unforgiving. Secondly, for tungsten users specifically, which I realize is only a handful of people watching this, but I have seen quite a few tungsten owners talking about maybe getting this amp thinking that it is going to drive their headphones better. And despite the massive power output capability of this amp, it still has the same roughly 20 volt output limit as most other amplifiers that do 6 watts at 32 ohms. So this does not drive tungsten better than most other amps. If you are looking for something that will get you to higher levels on a tungsten specifically, look for something like actually either a Nimbus or some of the other Violetric and SPL models that can do about 30 volts or the Lave HP2A which can do 60 volts. Though that is an issue for one headphone. If you need more than 20 volts or more than 17 watts for any other headphone, Turn it down, Jesus Christ. Thirdly, and most importantly for most people watching this, the performance you get out of the Valencia is going to depend pretty heavily on how you do your volume control upstream. I got a pretty great result when I was using the Wandler's Analog preamp or the Holoserene KTE as a preamp. In fact, I actually tried using the Analyzer as a DAC, which worked quite well as well. But and then I just used the SMSL Raw Pro DAC with its built-in digital volume control, and it was 
pretty flat, disappointing, and boring, quite frankly. Now, that's no fault of the amp itself. You can get a great result out of this if you use a nice preamp and a nice mechanism of volume control, but part of a review is helping you decide whether a product is going to be right for you, not telling you whether something is good or bad. And here, being a power amplifier, it is just going to depend on what other gear you're able to use this with. Particularly important given as most headphone users probably aren't going to have high quality preamplifiers laying about. Besides all of that, the Valencia did sound excellent, and I enjoyed using it beyond the evaluation period just for my own personal listening as well. It's got a technical, capable, neutral, and reasonably transparent inherent profile, and it worked great with every headphone that I threw at it. So in conclusion, I do feel that this amplifier is competitive in terms of sound quality for its price. I like it a lot more than most cheaper options I've tried, but it's got some practical quirks that need to be considered. And regardless of sound, I can't help feeling a little bit difficult about the price versus the hardware that you're getting inside. There's a lot of products I can think of that I don't necessarily like the sound of, but I can totally see where all the money is going. And this is a product that I do think sounds very good, but I do feel is a bit pricey for what's inside the box. So the value judgment is just going to have to be up to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions you wanted to ask me about amplifiers, DACs, headphones, music, gear, or anything else at all, come and say hey in the headphones.com Discord server or the headphones.com forum where I and other Wiggly Air enthusiasts will endeavor to help. Until next time, I'm Golden Sound. You're watching the Headphone Show by headphones.com. Thanks for watching. Cool beans.